In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Ship of Harkinian up and running on Xbox Series X and S. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has been decompiled and there are quite a few ways of running this. And one of these options is the Ship of Harkinian. Ship of Harkinian lets you run Ocarina of Time and Master Quest in a decompiled form where you can enjoy widescreen, higher frame rates, lots and lots of incredible options that are available in here. We're not even gonna cover all of them because there's just too many, but this is just a really cool project and adds a lot of fun things to this Zelda experience. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get it up and running on Xbox Series X and S. So let's go ahead and dive in. So before we get started getting Ship of Harkinian up and running, there's a couple things you're gonna need. The first of which being an Xbox Series X and S console. This will not work on Xbox One systems. Don't waste your time. And that Xbox Series X or S that you have needs to be registered for developer mode. So I have a guide on my channel on how to get set up for dev mode, as well as how to install RetroArch if you want to have additional emulators available to you. But follow along with this guide, get set up for dev mode, and then get your Xbox booted up into your dev mode home screen. Next, you are going to need an external drive of some sort to host your Ship of Harkinian game files. So I've been using the Crucial X6 since 2022. It has been a champion. You don't have to use this one, but it's just an example of what you can use. You just need to have any sort of USB drive, be it a thumb drive, SSD, or mechanical hard drive. The next thing you are going to need is a copy of Ocarina of Time, be it the base version or Master Quest or both. So you could dump this from either your actual N64 cartridge, which I have covered extensively on my channel on how to do, or if you have the compilation disc on GameCube, you could back that up using Clean Rip and then use Dolphin to extract the N64 ROM files. But you will need to have copies of the ROMs for this project to work. Now, the great thing is that almost every version of Ocarina of Time is supported by Ship of Harkinian. But if you want to check, you can always load up this Ship of Harkinian compatibility checker. And then you can drag your ROM files right in or click on load a ROM and you can check your ROM files. So there we go, mine's good to go. And then I can check my Master Quest ROM. And there we go. So both of those, good to go. All right, but let's go ahead and get Ship of Harkinian installed. So we're gonna head over to the dev store, link in the description below as always. But we're just gonna scroll down until we find Ship of Harkinian over here in the game section. So there we go. So for Xbox, it's called Shipwright. But we're just gonna come down here and click on download and you can either download it from here or from GitHub. So the release as I'm making this video is out of date that is being hosted on the dev store. So I'm just gonna click on download from GitHub for now. It usually works just to press download from here, but since the version is mismatched for right now, I'm going to download from GitHub. And that brings us to Ship of Harkinian Blair Charlie WP edition 9.0.2 as the latest version as of making this video. You just wanna look for the latest version for when you are doing this yourself. But you're gonna grab just the Ship of Harkinian. And if there are dependency files listed, you could go ahead and grab those as well. If there are no dependency files, you don't need them, so you could skip over that. So from here, go ahead and get your Xbox booted up into your dev mode home screen and make note of your remote access IP address and get that entered into a web browser on the device you downloaded Ship of Harkinian on. So once in your Xbox device portal, under My Games and Apps, just click on Add, and then you can drag your Ship of Harkinian package file in here, click Choose File, grab that, and then click on Next. And if there were dependency files that you could get, you could go ahead and install those by dragging them here or clicking on Choose File. Again, if these are not present, you could just skip over this. But there we go, got that installed here. And there it is. So we are now done with the Xbox device portal for today's video. And now that Ship of Harkinian is installed, we're just gonna change its UWP type from an app to a game. If you have this set automatically to happen in your Xbox device portal, you don't need to worry about this step, but otherwise just go ahead and get it swapped over. And then I always like to do a console reset, just my thing. 
But now we're gonna get our game file set up so we could actually enjoy playing this. So again, you are going to need those N64 ROMs that we just covered earlier, but they will not work in this format. We need to get these converted over to a different format to place on our USB drive. So we are going to need to download the PC version of Ship of Harkinian. If you're on PC or if you're on Linux or Mac, you'll just download it on there. Uh, my tutorials are Windows, so we're just gonna go over the Windows steps here. But by going to the Ship of Harkinian page, we could go and head and download this here on GitHub. And we're just gonna grab the latest version. So again, I'm gonna be showing how to do it on Windows, but if you're on Mac and Linux, that's fine as well. Just go ahead and download it. Once downloaded, get it extracted. Doesn't really matter too much where you put it. So I'm just gonna leave it on my desktop for now. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna launch Ship of Harkinian. And it's gonna say there's no OTR files found. Generate one now, yes. No ROMs found, look for one, yes. And now we're just gonna point it to our Ocarina of Time ROMs. And you'll see that it is extracting assets from that and converting them into an OTR file for us. And there we go. So now we have Ocarina of Time OTR. And that's exactly what we need to get this to run. Now, if you are also going to be using a Master Quest ROM, it's gonna ask if you want to extract another one. So we're gonna click on yes. And we're gonna select Master Quest. And it will do the same exact thing here for us. And there we go. And then it might launch directly on your PC, but you can just go ahead and close out of that. All right, so here we go. So now we have our Ocarina of Time.otr and our Master Quest. .otr. So these are the two files that we need to place on our Xbox's USB drive. So go ahead and get your Xbox USB drive hooked up to your PC. And on the root of your USB drive, we're going to make a new folder and we're gonna name it SOH. And inside that folder, we're gonna place the OTR files that we just created. So if you have both, you want both. If you only made one, that's fine, but just drag them right there and it is now good to go. So one more thing that you might be interested in, if you like to do mods and stuff, you can actually create a subfolder in here named mods and any ship of Harkinian based mods that you could download will go right inside this folder for you to use. I'm not going to be covering mods in this video. I'm just wanting to get you all set up for the basics. But with that all set, we're ready to take this drive out of our computer and move it over to the Xbox and begin playing. But now with that USB drive in place, we can just head down to our ship of Harkinian app and launch it. And you'll see Ship of Harkinian boot right up. So there we go. Ship of Harkinian up and running on our Xbox Series X and S. And so you can just start playing this game like you normally would, but it's really cool what you could do with this. So you have the base Ocarina of Time game, Master Quest if you added that, Randomizer, Boss Rush, like it's really cool stuff. And then by pressing your view button, back button, whatever it's called now, you can access the settings menu. And so you'll use the D-pad to navigate around this menu and then you can select different options with the blue box here and then press A to enter them. So for example, we could come down here and you can mess with audio settings, graphic settings. So this one will probably be of interest to a lot of you because the game is running at its original 20 FPS by default. And I mean, who wants to deal with that in this day and age? So let's go ahead and set this to 60. This might potentially work at 120 if you have your Xbox set to 120 FPS output. I'm locked to 60 right now, so I haven't tried this but you can see that it has seen my resolution of 1080p here. Again, I have my Xbox running through a RetroTink 4K right now, so I'm capped at 1080p. But you could also change things like the texture filtering, three point would be N64 accurate, so that's where I leave it, but just cool stuff like that. Uh, as for controls, you can set all of the different controls as you need them here. So one thing I like to do is change this B button. I don't like having it on that side. I like this to be X instead. So there we go. Now I have that set up the way I want. We have all the D pads. We have the analog stick settings. 
And then you could also set dead zones and curves and all that good stuff. So, I mean, let's knock that down to a 5%. We don't need it there. But a bunch of different settings to go through. It's really cool. So, like I said, there is just a crap ton of options that you could go through in here. But other things like turning on an input viewer, notifications... So again, you're just going to need to go through this on your own and mess around with it because there's just so much. But under the Enhancements tab, there's even more good stuff to mess with. So there's presets. Want to have a, if you just want to play the game like it is normally, but with higher frame rates, default, vanilla plus, enhanced, randomizer, presets, like, it's great stuff. Quality of life improvements. Skips and speed up, so I like to turn on skip intro because the intro for this game, I've seen it a billion times and I just don't need to see it anymore and it takes so long. But again, graphics, items, fixes, difficulty modifiers, mini game modifiers, it's amazing. There's so much. Again, you're gonna need to go through this and just spend some time with it because I, there's just so much. Randomizer settings, development tools, like, it's great stuff. But anyway, once you're done in this menu, you just go over to this uh, gray X over here and close out, and you can begin playing. So look how nice this is when you just tell it to skip that intro here. We're just going to put our name in, start the game, and we're already up and running in 16 by 9 widescreen. 60 FPS gameplay like this is fantastic. But that's where we're gonna go ahead and call it for this video. Ship of Harkinian adds just, again, so many options for you to mess with when it comes to Ocarina of Time and Master Quest that it's just incredible. These decompilation projects have been fantastic. They just really open up what you could do with these games in a fun way. But thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you have found it informative and it helps you get your Ship of Harkinian experience up and running so you can begin this cool journey. But here at the end of the video, just the usual favors to ask. Please be sure to hit those thumbs up, thumbs down buttons, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as hitting that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going in this awful YouTube uh, view downtrend blight that's going on, please be sure to hit that join button. And for as little as a dollar a month, you could get early access to videos as well as vote on our weekly retro reviews. Thank you so much to all of our current backers. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you for believing in what we do here. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you all back next video.